So one of the things I got to do last semester um, as part of being a grad student was I cross-enrolled and took a history of photography class in Berkeley. So I wanted to go back and see if I can go through one of the lectures of the class and see if I remember any of the stuff that I learned. You know what, we should do this in style. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll through some of these and tell you what I remember. But probably if you've studied photography before, you know that Daguerre was like the big head honcho who really got his name out there as the inventor of photography because he made the daguerreotype, which are those little ones that probably have a picture of a daguerreotype in here. So that's a daguerreotype and you've got the sweet frame and the creepy looking people from the oldie times. That's a fucking dead baby. Then people started trying to make photography like painting. They kind of always were trying to do that to make it like more credible as an art you know, as a way of making art. So they would like take all these photographs, cut them out, put them together as kind of like a historical painting. But this guy, Reg Lander, would get like poor women to come pose for him. And then Baudelaire was like, oh, this is some bullshit. All these poor people, butchers and maidens, and it's like idolatry. And everybody just wants to look at portraits of themselves and their dead babies. And it's like the ruin of society. Uh, these guys were the communards who did this thing in France where they were kind of getting together to overthrow the government because the government, you know, it was like the same deal as the French Revolution. The government was super rich. All the people were poor as fuck. And so the people were like coming out to try and rebel against the government. But they posed for these photographs as like a fuck you, look, we're strong and good, and we're making barricades in the middle of the streets. But the problem was they took these pictures um, to like show how fucking intense they were and militarized and ready to fucking fight. But then these pictures were used by the government to find them and kill a lot of them. And this is, and then also they used photography to like catalog the dead uh, after they had been, you know, um, executed. Oh, this was a crazy motherfucker. This is a Countess de Castiglione. And she just took all these fucking pictures of herself in different costumes. She's like the Cindy Sherman of the 19th century. These are pictures of just her legs over here. And then these are pictures of dancers' legs that if you went to like the ballet or whatever, you could get one of these cards. And if you were a man, a rich man, then you could go and like pick out one of these dancers and basically have sex with them. Because, like, dancers and actresses and prostitutes are all kind of clumped in together, like this working class, sexually available woman. A lot of shit with feet. This was some really crazy shit. Colwick and Munby were this couple, and he was like a rich guy, and then he had this mistress who was like posing for all these bizarre pictures, and it was like the Victorian dirt fetish. And I'll tell you, shit was crazy as hell. You should read all about this. This is like a whole mother. You could get into this for hours and hours. Like dirt fetish, work fetish. She was like really into her showing her muscles. There was this big controversy where nobody knew if horses ever had all their feet off the ground when they were running. Okay, so popping into the 20th century, uh, kind of jumping around time to time, but this is Virginia Shaw, I think. And this is, she was the first woman to win the Pulitzer Prize for photography. And this was taken on a brownie camera, which was the first Kodak's first camera, which came out like 1900 or some shit, uh, that was just available like commercially to like the general public. Um, so this is like the first picture of like modernist photography because um, he wasn't really thinking about things in terms of like, oh, here's a person, here's a ladder. Here's the thingy. He was more thinking about shapes of like circles and the, top, the circles on the tops of the people's hats and kind of abstracting how he was thinking about taking pictures. So you see a lot of like sad looking people. Um, and then also uh, Lewis Hine was doing all this stuff about children's labor rights because back then they would just fucking throw kids into like fucking meat grinders and get all their tiny limbs cut off. 
Okay, then you've got the Berlin Dada, who are fucking awesome. And this is Hannah Hoke, and she was like bisexual, and like fucking chicks making collages. And then you got John Hartfield, who's like trying to overthrow Hitler through his awesome propaganda photo montage. Okay, so Edward Weston was one of those guys taking pictures of all the like poor, sad farmers in the Depression. And then he went to Mexico because they were like having this like big like art explosion in Mexico. And he met, uh, he was hanging out with Tina Madotti, who's from Italy, who also went down to Mexico with him. But um, she was kind of like, fuck you, taking naked pictures of me. That's not all I'm about. So then she became a communist and started taking pictures of all like the communist demonstrators in Mexico that were like fucking getting really intense. And then this Mexican photographer, Manuel Alvarez Bravo, was starting kind of to get into like almost surrealism of uh, these kind of really bizarre pictures that were kind of of everyday life, but also kind of off. And this was a striking worker who was assassinated. Um, but when people talk about this, they talk about it being kind of like surrealist because it's kind of like he's asleep, but he's definitely dead and that's kind of fucked up. Um, and then Henry Cartier Bresson was in like the French Foreign Legion or whatever the French Army during World War II and got put into a prisoner of war camp and um, like before they got him, he buried his 35 uh, millimeter Leica camera. And then as soon as he got out, he got the camera out and then took some of these pictures of like the kind of, you know, the, People, the Nazis getting their come up in from all the people that they fucked over. Then there was this awesome photographer, uh, Roy de Carava, and he took all these photographs of uh, people in Harlem. And uh, he couldn't really find a venue for that, so he had to publish a book with Langston Hughes, that where Langston Hughes kind of made like a story to go along with the photographs, even though the photographs like were totally could have just been there on the standalone thing, but because Roy de Carabo was black, it was, I think, harder for him to get uh, distribution for his work. And then Deanne Arbus, you know her shit. You got Robert Mablethorpe, who is like the most hardcore gay photographer in the world. Um, I wish it was on here, but there was one, you know, I, if you know Robert Mablethorpe, you've probably seen it before, but there was one where he had a self-portrait of him with a bullwhip of his asshole. And that was awesome. And then he died of AIDS, and right after he died, they were gonna have a retrospective of his work in Washington, D.C., but um, it didn't happen. They canceled it because it was too controversial, and it was during the 80s when people were like flipping out about AIDS, and he, there were the culture wars where people thought like, you know, gay people were destroying the families and spreading disease, and it was also they were gay and horrible. And so the show got canceled, and then all these people protested and just projected his pictures on the outside of the museum, which in a way was maybe even more poignant than if they had actually had the show. And then you have ACT UP protesters who were you know, going and protesting some other, like there were some straight photographers taking photographs of people who were dying of AIDS, and they were really controversial because they mostly showed people with AIDS as like alone and isolated and like reflecting like as if they were like, you know, regretting their lifestyle or something. So you have these pro protesters showing pictures of like people in their family or their friends that had AIDS and kind of showing them more as like normal people who were loved and like have like whole communities of people around them. Then you got the Shermanator, Cindy Sherman dressing up and making it happen. I didn't know about this, but she did this fashion series for Vogue or Vanity Fair, I think Vanity Fair. And they gave her all these like really expensive fucking clothes to like pose in and shit. And then she made herself ugly as fuck and weird as fuck. And they still put them in the fucking magazine. Then there was this Japanese artist, uh, Yasumasa Morimura, who redid some Cindy Sherman pictures and some like pictures from art history. And he's like, you know, the, and he, I think he manipulates these with uh, Photoshop and stuff, but they're still pretty badass. Um, and then there were all these photographs of 9-11 that were really intense by different photojournalists, and it was kind of like, you know, is this more disturbing than this, even though this isn't actually showing what's going on, it's just showing people's reactions. Um, a lot of things we could say about that. And I also didn't know that from 1991 to 2009, the U.S. government didn't allow photographers to take pictures of um, soldiers' coffins. Um, it was like totally forbidden. And then I guess just a few years ago, the Obama administration re-let that happen. But I think that's crazy as fuck. 
I mean, obviously, duh, they're always like fucking with the information we're allowed to have, but that just seems like such an overt, crazy bullshit. And then there were all the pictures from Abu Ghraib, which were really fucking disturbing as shit, uh, always. And then there was an artist who took out all the prisoners from the Abu Ghraib photo. And then it's kind of like, what are we not seeing? And it kind of draws more attention to the, like, the frame and like, you know, what are we not seeing in this picture? And then what are we not seeing in the original? But, you know, maybe this sparked your interest. And if you want to have some readings, I have about 8 trillion readings. I'm not fucking shitting you. I have like two dictionary sized binders full of readings if you want to read about stuff or if you want to chat about photography or art. I did not do justice to any of it, but I had fun talking about it and pretending to be something. So thank you. Let's point the laser. Laser. What happens if I laser you? How's that like? Okay, thank you.